It's happening, it's happening. We were shooting, doing the best we could, no elk, and we're coming in to take our break and we spotted one right over there. So we're gonna go track them down. The return to Trinidad Beach. Trinidad Beach was the very first thing I shot 11 years ago. It was the very first thing I ever shot for the Care Channel like on true location. Uh, so I was really excited to go back and I remember the first time I shot it, it was actually out of accident. It wasn't even a planned thing. It was just that I showed up to the area and everything was rainy and I was freaking out that I, I, I didn't know what I was doing. And just on a whim, I kind of was like, let me just drive down to this state beach that I can get into right now and, uh, and it was beautiful the rain lit up and I just got this amazing footage so I was really excited to come back and do that again I remember a lot of the footage Ryan had shot previously and I was super excited to see that part one of the snags we came up on was there was a lot of clouds and it was covering the Sun and so when we got there we were sitting in shadows so I'm thinking to myself like this will clear eventually but I feel like the best light is already happening right now and it's not clear and I think we should be using this time to go maybe hunt elk or go to the river do something different and come back to Trinidad on a better day so I radio Ford what up? well the light seems to be tricking us this this week uh, we're gonna be a bit this is where a great example of the, di the difference between Ryan and I are which is uh, Ryan Ryan really likes to keep moving. He really likes to uh, not sit still too long. I'm a big uh, let's wait and see guy. Ryan is, uh, we're wasting time, we need to go somewhere else. This sucks. Look at that, it keeps getting bigger. All right, is what it is. We're just gonna get the shots that we get. I don't know, actually, I think this, Hey Ford. This cloud keeps getting bigger. It's pretty. Sh Do we want to uh, consider the idea of going and doing redwoods right now and coming back to this another morning? It looks better than the first day we shot. Well, maybe, yeah, but it's, uh, I know it, it can be a lot better. Like, sun would be streaming down on the rocks right now and be really, really nice. I know we can do this in better look, in better conditions. I mean, where I'm at, the sun isn't even visible, so it wouldn't be lighting up these rocks. Seems like we just gotta wait longer. All right, well, we'll just wait it out. I don't know. I just think that... We're, it's just Ryan was getting really freaked out the Sun wasn't coming out it wasn't hitting the rocks he was worried we we're gonna uh, waste this morning um, but from my perspective I kind of saw an opening in the clouds and I knew if the Sun came up and and hit that opening it would start illuminating the rocks and we would we would be able to get a decent shoot out of it so Ryan and I basically had a, a walkie-talkie argument for a little while about whether we should stay or go so here's my thought. My thought is, looking at the map, that if there was a morning, I, I, well, I gotta look at the weather, but if there were a morning to try to drive up to Gold's Bluff for just the off chance that the elk are there, it seems like these would be the condition because it'd take an hour to get up there. By the time we get up there, the sun might be in the more patchy stuff, be soft on the elk, uh, and we would be using this kind of time to get up there and then maybe if there's another morning that's more clear we would have more optimum conditions here I don't know I mean that could backfire you know, could get there there's no elk and then this clears up I just feel like right now if it were clear no clouds there would be some cool stuff going on we also have to get through the ranger station we get the gold bluff they might not even let us go we just wait in the morning Yeah, that's true. Okay, I could see the sun through the patch right now. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's not an, quite an angle yet for you. I guess we could just stick this out and 
when it gets higher just maybe it's light but it's softer because of the clouds so okay. I think he's annoyed with me right now I know that voice Ryan kept saying we should leave I kept saying we should stay he kept saying we should leave and I just felt nah it'll be fine just Ryan, go back through hear that Ryan just said he was wrong this is a big day for me <laughs> I uh, I was sitting here and I noticed that the clouds were scattered above the hill so I knew if it got above the hill it could hit these rocks ultimately it's gonna work out like if we went somewhere else it would have been fine being patient is such a key role like the ability to sit still is such a key factor in something we do just because sometimes you just have to wait for the sun you just have to wait for the sun to do a thing and and it's i get that way i get antsy when we have to sit here and wait i, I think we should be doing something else or we're wasting time but sometimes you guys really got to check yourself and just be like okay no we're gonna wait until it's perfect and the thing is i'm not saying i'm right and i'm not saying ryan's right um the thing is we're both right in certain times uh, for me, I was right this time. We come from very different perspectives and figuring out how to work those together, it takes a lot of practice. After 11 years though, we kind of got it down and for whatever reason, we, we kind of know when to trust each other's thing. A lot of people might think, you know, you want to have someone that's a little bit like you, that, that thinks the same way as you when you shoot. Uh, it's completely different. And so if you're both coming at it with the same perspective, you're just going to make the same wrong decisions or the same good decisions. When you have two opposite points of view, you actually think about everything a little bit more and it can help you make the right decision. Beautiful beach. It's even better than I remembered it. Right? It's a good thing we stayed, man. It was, it was literally like within what? Within two minutes of me saying, I don't know. Then it cleared up. Yeah, and all I could see was at the, the ridge of this hill was just the clouds being like completely scattered, like yeah. the sun was going to come out. Either way, it seems like, you know, made the good, yet, good decision yet again. Seems like we mostly do that. Good job. Nice call. Well done. Alright, let's get out of here. We've been trying to find elk on the beach all week long, nothing. So when our lagoon's location got overcast as well, this time we decided to take the opportunity and went on an elk hunt. Y'all know where your friends are? You guys want to go to the beach? <laughs> beach day? I keep saying that it was easy to find elk here, but this is an area where it was actually really hard to find elk. It's known to just have elk just hanging out, really accessible, like we can get excellent shots there. I've seen them on Google over and over and over again. But the thing is we kept driving up there and we just kept not finding them. 
but you know, we still made the most of it. It was still a better location than shooting the lagoons because we went out to the ocean and there's all these just beautiful little bluffs, just basically like, just, you know, sprigs of, of green, uh, little patches of them on the beach. So it just made for some really cool shots of just shooting some greenery with some ocean in the background. You can do all the uh, wildlife chasing you want, but majority of the time it just uh, it's just happenstance. A couple times we've tried to track them down has not yielded oak fruit. They're like the wind, man. So we pack up. We feel like it was uh, a good shoot, and we start driving away, even though we didn't find elk. And as we're leaving. Out of the corner of our eye, we see a bull elk. Whoa, 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 stop, pull over, bull elk. We just screech the car to a halt, back it up. We pull over and we look and there's this elk just kind of strolling down the beach. You scrambling, you jump out of the car, you grab the packs, and then it's like, you know, you start slowing down your mind a little bit because this is, this is exciting, this is what you want to get. And, and when it's just one like this and, he, and he's on the move, you, you got a limited amount of time. It's happening, it's happening. We spotted one right over there, so we're gonna go track them down. So you gotta get all your stuff together and you gotta slow down your brain and be like, all right, all right what do I need? Uh, you, you don't wanna be putting your stuff together while you're out there in front of them, you don't wanna scare them away, so I'm, I'm grabbing all my gear, I'm putting lenses in my pouches and getting the camera out and getting it ready, get the tripod set. And then we just gingerly walk out. We don't wanna kind of encroach on this elk's space because they could be quite dangerous. Like, don't get too close to elk. Um, so we tracked it really slowly, really quietly, and we're able to actually get some pretty amazing shots of just this one elk. I don't know why it was out there by itself, but I'm glad it was. And at first you're really excited and you start running up and then you're like, you gotta remember, nope, slowly roll, calm down, lower your energy because like if you're frantic like that and you pull up on an elk, he's not gonna be happy. He's gonna run away or he's gonna run at you. You don't want either one of those. So four circles around to the left and I try to cut him off around the front and I turn the corner and I, uh, to my surprise, he was right behind the tree right there and it just kind of like, we caught each other, so oh! And the elk just kind of spins around and looks at me and he's like, you know I'm bigger than you, right? Ryan as always, is more daring than I am. Um, so as we're following the elk, and we get around the corner, I'm getting ready to set up my tripod. Ryan's shooting a shot, he's, he's got a good one going. But it just turns around, looks at us, and just starts walking towards us. And I'm like, nope, <laughs> I'm out of there. I'm like, okay, I just set it up, I recorded the camera, I got the focus, I recorded it, and I just walked away to let them know hey, I'm not a threat. I just left the camera recording. Ford was joking, he's like, we're totally gonna see that elk just kind of charge at the camera, aren't we? Can you gotta explain another broken camera. We hide around the corner and we're just thinking like, okay, is this elk gonna come around and just destroy Ryan's camera? We, we don't know. We wait for a while, nothing happens. Ryan comes back around. The elk just calmed down a little bit. I think he just didn't want us there. I, I wouldn't want us there. We're annoying as hell. We'll probably leave him alone at this point. He was agitated, so we got a couple shots. I got one with the water in the background. Got a wider one. Got him walking away. It'll do. Makes me happy. Wildlife and nature conservation is part of our job, so I don't want to be one of those jerks that's out there harassing animals and, and doing stuff they don't want us to do. So we got what we needed. He was a, a little agitated, so like, let's let's leave him alone. Let's move on. But the decision worked out. It worked, we moved and we got an elk. Experience and all the cool toys make a big difference. But sometimes in the end, luck is still the bigger part. Victorious, the victors.